Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for links to some great online retailers. There's also individual links for knives that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting discussion topic to share with you guys. The topic of discussion today is when is lockstick a problem on a folding knife? What is lockstick? Uh, let me use the XM18 as an example. Lockstick can occur on a lot of different types of locks right out here. Today we have axis style locks, we've got liner locks, we've got compression locks, sub liner locks, right? I think the best example uh, is a titanium frame lock. So um, in the case of the XM18 here, you can see how when the blade gets fully deployed, that titanium lock bar contacts the steel blade tang. In this case, it's actually a steel lock bar insert attached to a titanium lock bar, right? So there's uh, direct surface contact here. When you go to disengage the lock bar, this one is smooth. There's no stickiness. There's no drag. It moves over. In the case of this XM18, which is newer and unused, right? You can see it's the exact same thing, except when I go to disengage it, oh, a little bit of stick. See how it was uh, kind of sticking there, right? Oh my gosh, I get so many, so many questions, so many comments, right? I just bought this really expensive knife. Oh my gosh, it's centered, it's perfect, it's beautiful. It's everything that I want it to be, but I went to disengage the lock bar and it kind of sticks a little bit. Should I be concerned? I understand that feeling. I get it. I'm not making fun of you. I get it. I have bought a lot of knives. My first really expensive knife, the first teeny tiny little, little tiny thing just bothered me to no end, right? Gives you buyer's remorse. You feel like you should return it. You want it to just be perfect, right? Pump the brakes. We're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about when it's a problem and what you should do. First off, this is not a, I'm not going to offer a, uh, like a fix it now type of thing, right? There's the whole, you know, color in the surfaces with the lead or, right? I'm, I'm not going to, that, that's not what this video is. We're going to talk about essentially why it's occur, occurring in a extremely non-scientific way. And then I'm going to, you know, give you guys my opinions and tell you what you should do about it or what you can and can't do about it, right? Thanks so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. If you'd like to check out my Patreon, there is, of course, a link right down in the description. Your support would be, mean the uh, world to me. And please follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Every knife laid out here is mine. Here's the interesting thing that's going on here. Each one of these knives has either experienced some form of lockstick in the past or is currently still experiencing it, right? This used to bother me so much. I hated that feeling that it was sticking or making itself worse, right? I know that inside of your head, you're thinking this is an issue. It will cause, uh, it will give me a utilitarian or tactical disadvantage <laughs> and, it, or, and it'll get worse over time. It'll get worse and worse and worse. And I just bought it in my window for returning the thing is closing in. I only have 30 days, right? Uh, what should I do? Most of the time, let me say there's, you know, Guys, if you're new to my channel, I am long-winded. I talk for 20 to 30 minutes. I've got 1,500 uploads where I do pretty much exactly that. This channel has, you know, grown and there, there's, a, you know, people who sit and watch. But the new people are always like, what the heck, you know? This is going to be a long-winded discussion. But people generally who are new and sit all the way through one of my videos, sometimes they feel like they didn't get the answer that they wanted. And then, then uh, I sat all the way through this just to get, listen, for those people who don't want to sit through this, right? And you want to know what the general idea here with this video is, leave it alone, leave it alone. I know how hard that is, right? You get a new knife, you want to take it apart. You want to lubricate it, right? You want to get the action exactly right. Maybe it's a, you know, a, it's just a microscopic amount off light. It's a, uh, what do they call that? A pl uh, <laughs> the smallest unit of measure, right? plank something or other. Yeah, it's that far off center. So you got to adjust it, right? And then you dig something up and it, oh, I got to send it back because I messed it up. Right? Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. That's what people are going to want to do. They're going to want to take it apart and do all these magic treatments, right? Don't do that. Leave it alone. Um, my uh, Ritter Hogue, uh, by the way, these knives that they're available, they'll be listed at the retailers down below. Uh, down below. Ritter Hogue RX, uh, RSK MK1 G2 Knife Works exclusive has zero lock stick absolutely but it had a little bit right it's the axis lock that friction that bar against the tang of the blade right it's working in its smooth spot that's what it's doing repeated you know surface contact the steel on the uh on the axis bar 
Some people say that's titanium. I, I don't think that's the case. I think that's yeah, that's that's steel. Um, but uh, yeah, this steel on steel contact, which is generally more slippery than raw titanium or carbonized titanium on a you know titanium lock face that doesn't have the insert. What it's doing is it's constantly rubbing against and it's smoothing out those imperfect surfaces, which are really, really tiny, generally speaking. Uh, if you get a brand new knife with a little bit of lock stick, that doesn't necessarily mean that there is a flaw with it. It just means all the, the it's the two parts that are moving and contacting each other the most, you know, consistently are trying to work themselves out, right? Over time, you know, these materials are not completely and totally indestructible. They're, they're, they're finite, just like everything else in the universe, right? So as that lock bar, in the case of the XM18, you know, continues to lock up repeatedly, each surface is actually having, you know, microscopic amounts of material shaved away from it. And as it approaches a new part of the surface, if that surface is, you know, less perfect than the previous surface that it wore through, then you may hit a bump in the road, so to speak. The same thing can be said with a compression lock, right? With a, uh, with a liner lock or countersunk liner lock, countersunk, you know, frame lock, whatever it is that you want to call it. How's the definition today? Is it good? Yeah, it seems good. Okay. All right. Same thing with a liner lock, all of these locks, the same exact thing. So, um, I think what people do, like in the case of the uh, XM18 here, I'm going to do my best to keep this under 15 minutes today, guys, right? This one is locking up nice and early. Now, when I got this knife, right, when I first got it, this is what the lockup looked like, right? And uh, it was easy to disengage. From here, it's super easy to disengage, right? Now, as I continue to sit and flip it, and right, and whatever I was doing with it, it eventually wore into about right here. Uh, now that doesn't mean that it's by the people freaking out about the whole early lockup thing. I've got a video about that. That doesn't mean that it's going to continue to wear at that pace forever. It's finding its settling point, right? Locks generally find a good settling point and that has to do with how the, uh, tang geometry is now the lock face geometry. As you can see that the tang is sloped, eventually it'll find a settling point. These parts will sort of work harden. Titanium has much more of a work hardening effect than steel on steel, but eventually these, these two you know, surfaces are smashing against each other constantly and becoming ever so slightly harder as they continue to lock up. So the lock wear should slow down over time. But anyways, it wore into this point right here and I noticed, oh, we got a little bit of stick, right? And by a little bit, I mean like this, a little bit. That amount of stick is what 99.9% .9 of you are asking me about. Should I be concerned? No. Absolutely not. Here's when you should be concerned to answer the question that is in the title of the video. If you find that you're having to put an enormous amount of force on the lock bar to get it to disengage. Now, I'm not talking about tightness of the lock bar. People have told me before their AR-75 or their uh, three-quarter ARs, right? It's so hard to push it over. Yeah, it's tight, but I'm talking about the not, not the tension here. I'm talking about the contact on the tang of the blade, right? If you're going and you can't get it to disengage, first check and make sure that your fingers aren't pushing against the lock bar. I know that for a lot of people that's going to be funny, like, of course, it's kind of like, you know, my computer won't turn on, check to make sure that it's plugged in, right? Or, well, <laughs> I'm thinking about like old computers that had to be plugged in all the time. My TV won't turn on, check to make sure your TV's plugged in, right? If it's a frame lock, check to make sure that you're not pushing against the lock bar, right? Now, you know, most people will be able to tell whether or not it's lock stick, right? But if you're having to push incredibly hard before it click and it comes across, right, you might have a problem. If you have to use a tool or a coin to pry the lock bar open, that's a problem, okay? Everybody else, you don't have a problem. You don't have an issue, right? If it looks like this, click, right? This one is, gosh dang, it's actually getting better on camera. If it looks like this, that is not a problem. Stop fretting about it. <laughs> so, you know, on, on a frame line, the, the exact same kind of thing is occurring, right? With a liner lock or with a compression lock. It's just the amount of surface contact, right? Has to do with, if you have too much surface contact, right? Because people always talk about frame locks needing perfect geometry to get them to not slip. If the tang of the blade is cut, you know, too much at an angle, then the lock is not going to, it's not going to stick, but it's also going to be way too slippery, right? If there's force on the spine, 
it could cause the lock bar to slip and disengage. But at the same time, if this surface is too flat and too perfect, right, and there's too much surface contact between the lock bar and the, the tang of the blade, uh, then you got then you've got way more of an opportunity for, you know, things to be sticking and, and being a problem. So it has to lock up right. It ha they, they're trying to get it to not stick right. Uh, having a lock bar insert generally helps with that. Usually on titanium frame locks, it's, uh, it's a, uh, uh, carbonized titanium lock face, uh, that causes stick and not a steel lock bar insert. But as you can see here with this $600 XM 18, yeah, I've got a little bit of stick. I know good and well it will go away. This knife, brand new, my XM24, which is even more expensive, had lock stick when I first got it. Absolutely had lock stick when I first got it. Not a hint of it anymore. I just kept flipping it and messing with it. Truthfully, it took a long time. I think I worked the lock stick out of that one in about two months, something like that. Spider Coast Shaman. I've introduced new scales to this, right? But when I first got it, yeah, it had lock stick. PM2. It's actually still got a little bit. Whoops, that was terrible. This has got a little bit right here. Can you hear it? Just a little tiny bit left. Just a little bit. I don't even know if you guys can hear it. Uh, Socom Elite actually still has lock stick. Just a little bit. It's more of a lock mush. It's more of just like a, it's not a click. It's just, it's kind of a mushy stickiness, right? Um, this guy, when I first got it, the, uh, the Zerks. Um, from Fanatic Edge, the customized one, it had a little bit of lock stick. Uh, just a little teeny tiny bit, and then it worked itself out. Sometimes it takes a day. Sometimes it takes, in my case, with the XM24, it took like two months, right? But it worked itself out. Sometimes, as you continue to flip these knives, you'll notice that the lock stick seems like it's actually getting worse, right? Don't fret. If you don't need a tool to pry it apart, you're not in you're not in a bad situation yet, right? In the case of this XM18, this uh, this one here, this harpoon span so with a full tie, man, there's not a hint of it left. It's found its settling point. It has not moved from this spot. Not a hint of locks. You can see how smooth that's disengaging. Absolutely nothing. Let's see if I can zoom up here. Not a hint of it. Absolutely nothing. And this thing is so beautiful to manipulate now it is so so smooth and easy oh man i love this thing i carry this all the time love it i'm so happy i just waited right my first xm18 ever years ago had lock stick and i freaked out about it right i ended up uh i think ended up selling that one or trading it back to arizona custom knives for something else right and i mentioned it when i was like this thing has a little tiny bit of lock and they were like yeah whatever we don't care <laughs> Uh, I, I get, believe me, I get it. You know, I do. I'm not making fun of anybody. Here's some things that you should not do to try and correct that lock stick. Do not take this apart, right? Don't take this apart and try to alter the surface of the lock bar insert, especially don't take the, the lock bar insert out. I'm talking mostly about frame locks because Titanium frame locks tend to be the knives that are really expensive, usually that people freak out about, right? They take their first big jump on and then, oh no, right? Those are the ones. Do not take the lock bar insert out and try to grind down the surface to change. Don't do that, okay? Here's another thing that you shouldn't do. Don't take your lubricant of choice and dump it all over the lock bar. Don't do that. Why? Because you don't want that surface slippery. Believe it or not, a little bit of lock stick is actually good in uh, in a usage situation, right? It, it's in sh it's uh, sort of a um, uh, part. Uh, um, what's the word I'm using for? What's the dialogue that I'm using for? It's it's a way for you to know that the lock bar uh, is actually engaging the tang in a way that is secure on an exposed frame lock, right? Uh, your hand sort of, as you're using the knife, your hand sort of holds the lock in place. I know there's going to be so many people going, that's why you don't ever get a frame lock. That's why frame locks aren't great. Any lock, any lock cold steel triad lock fans, because that's who's saying that. Any lock can experience lock, uh, uh, um, lock stick, right? Any lock can experience failure. Um, and that's, that's just the case, right? Uh, so titanium frame locks are fine. I've been using titanium frame locks forever, right? I would say that they're no more sticky, no more consistently sticky than any other lock that's out there, right? I would say it seems like about 5% uh, of the knives that I uh, that I have, you know, are, are still sticky after, you know, 
a, a decent amount of time, but all of them, all of them except for one knife in my entire life, did the lock bar or did the uh, did the stickiness go away? All of these, any of the other ones that still have it, this guy, which doesn't get used or carried very much, right? That'll go away. The one on the XM18 will go away, right? Everything else has basically gone away. I had a uh, Chavez 228 Midtech, uh, I, I believe was the one that had lock stick that was, was it the 228? No, it wasn't the 228. The 228 came with a scratch on it. That's why I had, it was like a huge gash, like somebody had thrown it across the floor and they replaced it. The, the, uh, this was a long time ago. The one that I had uh, that had lock stick was a Medford 187F and the lock stick was so bad. This was years ago, guys. I've had many Medfords. Uh, and none of them have ever had any lock stick, any hint of it, right? Except for this guy right at the beginning, just a teeny tiny bit. And now it's completely gone. Medford 187F, the lock stick was so bad, I had to use a tool to disengage it. But that came from the secondary market. I did not buy that guy brand new. I've had, I've owned so many, I've owned hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of knives. All the rest of them have gone away, right? If you're experiencing that, that's an issue, right? But anyways... The reason that you don't want to put lubricant on the lock face uh, is because that's supposed to, there's supposed to be enough friction there to keep it locked in place. Same thing goes for a triad lock, an axis lock, a liner lock, a compression lock. This video is not about which lock is the best. They all can experience some form of lock stick. You don't want that surface where those pieces slide into place, they connect or they contact each other. You don't want that surface to be lubricated. You want it to, to be dry, but you want it to be connecting in a way that I understand, you know, wanting the satisfaction of having it disengage incredibly smooth, right? But you don't want that surface lubricated. Don't do that. Absolutely not. Something that you can do, a couple of things that you can do now that we're 16 minutes in, even though I promised everybody 15 minutes, that's clearly not going to happen. You can take a pencil, right? And you can color in the surface of the, you can use the lead, right? And, and mark over the surface on the blade tang or on uh, the lock bar. If you take the knife apart, you can kind of, truthfully, that's going to be kind of a temporary fix. You'll notice that it'll kind of be okay for a little bit. And then a little bit will come back. It might fix it forever, but I mean, okay, you can do that. The graphite helps it, you know, lubricate a little bit better. The other thing you can do, right, sometimes, and, and a lot of people are going to, um, you know, tell me that this is their case. When you um, introduce uh, new scales to the knife that are different from uh, how they were, you know, from the factory, we've got these guys all, all here have custom scales, right, or scales that were different than the ones that came with them from the factory. The XM24 uh, would probably be a better example. All of these knives experienced lock stick at some point, and uh, honestly, I think it was all right after I changed the scales out. So even though some of the really expensive knives have incredibly tight tolerances, right? Hinders have something like one one thousandth of an inch tolerances on on uh, you know everything. When you take something apart, everything is shifting and adjusting slightly. These are tuned directly uh, at the factory; they're hand tuned and hand assembled. In the case of the the um, the hinders, right? Uh, so they're, you know, the people who work there know exactly how to tune these things. They know exactly how to make them perfect. Generally speaking, from the factory, a new knife like this will not have any issues. But that doesn't mean that it won't at all, right? Uh, a lot of you probably are watching this right now thinking, I just bought an XM18. I haven't done anything with it. Within a week, all stock, I'm, I'm getting a little bit of lock stick. Okay, that definitely does occur, right? Uh, but for people who notice lock stick occurring after they switched out, uh, you know, the, the parts or something, it's because everything sort of just shifted just a little bit. And maybe now because of that, if you could imagine with me, right, let's say we take all the screws out of here. We take, right. We take it all the way apart. We put this new titanium scale on, right. And then we attach everything. Well, during the attachment, even though everything is fitting almost exactly the same way that it was like not something that's visible to the naked eye, right. It's fitting almost exactly the way that it was ever so slightly different. It will because we have maybe a shift down in this scale and a shift up in, in this scale, you know, just like a microscopic shift. Now that lock bar is interacting with the tang of the blade ever so slightly in a different way, right? So something that you could do, and this is something that, you know, you can, you can try with any knife, right? Take the knife completely apart and clean everything and then put it back together, right? 
If you want to, you can just put, as you're putting things together, you can put just the smallest amount of pressure either down on one side and up on the other or down on the opposite side and up on the other, right? Just to get things to shift just a little bit differently. In some cases, I'm gonna say maybe 20% of the time, that will actually put things back the way that they were uh, and get the, uh, the lock face to lock up the way that it was, right? If that doesn't work, let me emphasize this again. Just leave it alone, leave it alone. I took two months with the XM24 and it's smoothed out and it's beautiful now. Knives will break in. The only time you have an issue with lock stick, the only time it's actually a cause for concern is if you're, you're needing a tool to disengage. If you need to pry that lock bar open, right? If you need this amount of force, it's not an issue. No, literally no part of me is concerned with that. You guys shouldn't be there. I hope that this was helpful. The entire point of this was to kind of, you know, discuss something that we've all thought about and all been concerned about at one point or another. And I know there's a lot of new people in this world feeling compelled to spend a lot of money on really, really nice knives, right? And then they get concerned with stuff like this, right? Or they hear the term lockstick and automatically assume that it's a severe negative thing. I hope that I've put some of your minds at ease. Um, and I also hope that I have helped mitigate some of the, like the barrage of questions that I get about lockstick uh, on a almost daily basis. Don't be concerned with it. Let it work itself out. But as per usual, if you have additional questions, feel free to ask me right down in the comments section. You can contact me on Instagram, which by the way is at metal underscore complex. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was, uh, a little bit entertaining, right? That's always the that's that's always one of the main goals. If you did enjoy this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day.